Samsung's modern-day empire is so vast that some South Koreans claim it's now possible to live a Samsung-only life. You can use a Samsung credit card to buy a Samsung TV for your Samsung-made apartment's living room, on which you'll watch the Samsung-owned pro baseball team. Although Samsung is commonly known for its electronics and information technology division, which manufactures televisions, refrigerators, laundry machines, computers, and, of course, smartphones, it is far more than just an ordinary electronics manufacturer. It's a multinational corporation with subsidiaries in nearly every industry imaginable. Real estate, construction, shipbuilding, food, hotel management, entertainment, and even weapons are all on the table. Samsung isn't even mostly owned by South Korea, yet it accounts for a quarter of Korean GDP and produces roughly a fifth of the country's total exports. According to Fair Trade Commission data and a Reuters calculation, Samsung Group affiliates revenue of 326.7 trillion won, $289.6 billion, in 2019 was worth about 17% of South Korea's GDP. It also accounts for 28% of all exports in the country. Samsung Electronics operating profit to that of South Korea's top 10 sales companies increased from 62.9% to 68.6% in 2019. Likewise, in 2020, Samsung Electronics increased its operating profit by 29.5% to 35.95 trillion won. In fact, by the end of 2020, the combined operating profit of the nine companies was less than half of Samsung Electronics operating profit. As a result, Samsung is Korea's primary economic engine. So, does that mean South Korea's economy is being run by Samsung? Does Samsung largely control South Korea's economy as well as the government? Before starting the long debate, let us take a step back and start our discussion with the history of Samsung. The journey of the giant Samsung began in 1938, when Lee Byung-chul started his business in Taegu, Korea. It started off as a small trading company of 40 employees dealing with groceries, while it now has 490,000 employees, surpassing the total combined count of employees at Apple and Google. The company first started producing noodles, then moved on to wool and sugar, and finally to financial services and electronics. It is made up of 80 different businesses and affiliates, all of which are commercially and legally separate but united under one roof. Samsung first entered the electronics industry in 1969, with several divisions dedicated to electronics. Black and white televisions were their first products. To better compete in the textile industry, the company expanded its textile manufacturing processes in the 1970s to cover the entire line of production, from raw materials to finished goods. The company then began exporting home electronics to other countries. Samsung was already a major manufacturer in Korea at the time, having purchased a 50% stake in Korea for semiconductors. During the same time period, the company began to invest in the heavy, chemical, and petrochemical industries, indicating a promising growth path for the company. In the 1970s and 1980s, Samsung experienced a massive growth spurt. It began to invest more in development and research in the 1980s in order to establish itself in global markets. It began to build plants and factories in other countries, and invest in foreign ventures. Samsung then began developing advanced electronics in the early 1990s and grew to become the world's largest producer of microchips. After decades of development, it has now grown into the technological and electrical behemoth that we know today. Samsung now owns an entire city, known as Samsung Digital City, where there are a few of the company's businesses. Now, if we talk about Samsung's contribution to South Korea's economy, Samsung is a chaebol, or large family-controlled conglomerate that has dominated South Korea's economy for decades. Samsung controls 20% of the Korean stock exchange and 15 to 17% of the country's economy. To people outside South Korea, Samsung is purely a technology company. However, this family-controlled business operates in a wide spectrum of fields, from engineering to chemicals. It is a great pride of South Korea. Samsung's domestic and international success as the world's largest smartphone manufacturer has made it a key symbol of South Korea's economic transformation. After World War II, the country went from being one of the poorest in the world to becoming one of the richest in recent years. After World War II, there was an economic crisis of 1997. 
Although the vast majority of chai bowls failed during the Asian financial crisis of 1997, according to a study, 14 of South Korea's 30 largest companies were wiped out during that time period. On the other hand, even the Asian financial crisis of 1997 failed to stifle Samsung's expansion. Samsung has been the shining knight, rescuing the country from post-war devastation and then saving it 60 years later from the chaos of the financial crisis. Samsung has helped South Korea gain international recognition and become a prosperous economy. It has been steadily growing for decades. It now has 80 subsidiaries, which is more than double the number it had 25 years ago. And it has also grown in size relative to South Korea's economy, twice its share in 1987. According to economists, small and medium business owners, and some politicians, Samsung no longer just controls but also dominates the country, wielding power equal to that of the government. In fact, the country is now referred to as the Republic of Samsung by some Koreans. Samsung is involved in almost every aspect of South Korean life, including the construction of roads and oil rigs, the operation of hotels and amusement parks, the sale of insurance, and the operation of gas stations. According to Samsung spokesman Kevin Cho, a powerful Samsung is good for the country because it contributes significantly to South Korea's exports, tax revenue, and employment. Samsung is a global player, not just a domestic one, according to Cho. Moreover, there are examples from various sectors in which Samsung is involved and hence contributes to South Korea's economy, indicating that the country cannot run without it. So, let's talk about them. To begin with, it runs world-class medical research centers and hospitals across the country, including Samsung Medical Center, the country's top hospital. Although South Korea has universal health care, high out-of-pocket costs mean that 87% of Korean households also have private health insurance, with Samsung being the most prominent provider. It recently invested $83 million in a partnership with colleges to train semiconductor majors, as well as $148 billion to expand its artificial intelligence, biotech, 5G communications, and automotive electronics businesses, making it South Korea's largest source of R&D. Then there's Samsung Biologics, the company's biopharmaceutical division. In March 2020, the company was also ranked first in South Korea for brand reputation among pharmaceuticals. It also secured a $362 million contract to manufacture coronavirus antibodies for a U.S. company. Samsung's product portfolio includes everything from clinics to funeral services, shipyards and military equipment, allowing you to live and die using only Samsung products. Samsung has a significant lead over Apple in its home market. Only one out of every 10 smartphone users in South Korea owns an iPhone. Samsung controls around 60% of share in the smartphone market and holds it consistently throughout the years. It also provides Apple Inc. with flash memory, mobile RAM A4 chip processors, and display panels, among other things. That being said, Samsung is just the king of them all. So, South Koreans can be born in a Samsung-owned hospital, learn to read and write with Samsung tablets as they grow up, and then attend Sung Kyun Kwan University, which is affiliated with Samsung. It doesn't stop there, though. They could then live in an apartment complex built by Samsung and outfitted with the company's appliances and electronics. When South Koreans die, they may end up in a Samsung funeral home. Another reason that Samsung has an incalculable impact on South Korea's economy is because it employs tens of thousands of South Koreans, produces goods across the board, and even owns many of the homes and stores where these people live and work. Because of its size and rapid growth, the government looks to Samsung to solve its unemployment problems. Samsung Electronics promised to create 40,000 new jobs in the next three years, in response to a government request in 2018. Now let's talk about Samsung's influence on South Korea's government. Samsung provides direct support to its government in the form of universities, schools, hospitals, and housing complexes, among other things. The government receives much benefit from Samsung. The South Korean government cannot ignore Samsung's political, economic, social, and scientific contributions to helping them fulfill their responsibilities to their people. It protects, provides, and invests in talent. On the political stage, Samsung is a strong advocate of the South Korean government. This can be evidenced by the invitation of Samsung Electronics CEO Lee Jae-yong to attend and accompany President Moon Jae-in at the third summit with North Korea in 2018. 
Moreover, Samsung gives the government immense negotiating power due to its economic importance worldwide. Now you must be thinking, what if Samsung collapses? How will South Korea suffer? As a result of Samsung's demise, the revenue stream and tax payments of Samsung's contractors would be reduced. Its entire workforce would be laid off, resulting in a 7.1% increase in unemployment, excluding contractors who rely solely on Samsung, whose unemployment rate is expected to double. As a result, unless the government increases its budget for it while neglecting other services, schools, hospitals, and other services will become more expensive and unaffordable for a large portion of the population. The domestic stock exchange and financial market would lose foreign investors. The National Pension Service of the country is expected to lose $16.7 billion in investment. As a result of the revenue shortfall, the government would be unable to fulfill its basic responsibilities to its citizens. If Samsung fails, South Korea faces a more serious economic crisis than it did in 1997. All in all, Samsung's failure would have far-reaching consequences for the South Korean government and economy. So, what are your views on this? Do share them in the comment section below. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask us. We will be happy to answer them for you. If you found this video informative and enjoyed the content, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button as well. Thank you for watching.